Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Right, because our people need to know who they are according to the Bible. Right. Our people need to know that salvation is for you. Right. Repentance is for you, but you must be converted out of Christianity. Right. Yes, out of the white man's religion. Bring it out. Yes, out of your oppressor's religion. See. Yes, out of Muhammad's religion, right. which is not your brother. Right. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Bring it out. The Lord shall bring a nation. So the Lord shall bring a nation. A nation, read. Against thee. A who? Against thee. So first and foremost, the Bible says, the Lord shall bring a nation against another people, referring to the Israelites. What? So who is this telling us that God loves everybody? Who is this telling us, feeding us with lies, saying that God loves everybody? God says he's going to bring a nation against his chosen people because they disobeyed his laws. See. So how can the God that was that, that, that you claim loves everybody and he's going to bring a nation against us because of our disobedience? Right. You lie to us, Pastor. You right. lie to us, T.D. Jakes. You lie to us. And now it's the high time for us to wake out of sleep. Why is to wake up the minds of our people? We don't need no more of the lies of Christianity telling us that Jesus Christ is a white man when the Bible says he's a black man. That he died a black man's death. Right. We gotta give our people hope because they believe in a false reality. They believe in Caesar Boiser. We from from far from far from far from the end of the earth. Uh -huh. As swift as the eagle fly. That's America today. That's America today. That was Rome at one point, right? And now that's America today. That was Spain at one point, and now that's America today. Right. The same forefathers. Bring it out. slaughter for the children. See? We. A nation whose tongue thou shall not understand. So the Bring nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand that language, that tongue was Latin at the time. See? And now our Hispanic brothers think that they speak the apostles' language. They think they speak the Queen's language. Right? They think our, our, our Spanish is their language. When God said he sent the nation to indoctrinate you, he sent the nation to conquer you, and now you take on his religions, his God, God, uh, 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 Roman Catholic. Bring it out. The Virgin Mary, that's a lie. Wait. Right. Mary had sex and more sex with Joseph. Bring right. it out. Christ had plenty of sons, but Christ had plenty of, of, of brothers and sisters. Right. See, John? We. A nation of fierce continents. A what? A fierce continents. The word said, the Bible says, a nation of fierce countenance, meaning they didn't give a daggone about you so-called old man. They didn't, they didn't regard the person of the old, Bring it out. the young. They had fierce continents. They were in full submission and full obedience in the will of the Father Teach up. to destroy his people. Right. We're the only nation, the only people out of course with God. Right. right. We which shall not regard the person of the old, uh, or show favor uh, to the young. He shall not show favor to the young. He'll come in and drop drugs in your community. And have his minions, the young boys, come and scoop them up. Make them feel like they run the block. Make them feel like they something other than God. Bring it out. The tells us that Christ was a black man. Right. And we must stand up for our community. Right. Salvation is being preached to you so-called Negroes. Teach up. You so-called Hispanics. Why? Because we are in need of salvation. Right. We. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land uh -huh. until thy be destroyed. So the Bible says he shall eat the fruit of thy land and thy cattle. We have much fruit. We have much produce before the before this before this pest before this pestilence came and destroyed us. Read on. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil. So me, they were not going to leave us anything precious. They were going to give us the slum of the foods. They were going to give us the pork. 
Bring it out. They want to give us the, the uh, 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 pork chops, right. hog mouth, chitlin, scrap. Give me some more old school food. Say something. What you got? They was going to give us all these the abominable foods. What up your big feet? What our people like to eat? That's an abomination that goes to God. Leftovers. And we take that and we put it on our dinner plate and we play over it and we think we got ourselves a delicate. Slop. Which they feed pigs. We. On the increase of thy kind, of what? Of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. So that's why Christ came. That's why Christ came, because we was in need of a savior. Give me my Matthew. The Bible tells us that Christ came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came for his people to receive the understanding of who they are. Matthew 15, 24. Yes, sir. Come on. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, oh. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we talking about the Messiah, Christ. Take this out, my sister. Christ said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. You can hear this for yourself. Read this. Come on. But he said, and, but he answered and said, oh. I am not sent. So Christ answered and said, I am not sent, read, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To who? Unto the house of Israel. So the Bible says Christ was specifically sent for you. Christ was uh, specifically sent for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My sister, if I were to ask you what's your nationality according to the Bible, you would tell me you don't know probably, right? According to the Bible, not what America tells you, but if I were to ask you what's your nationality, because the Bible records approximately 18 nations in the Bible. Right? A nation determines nationality. If I say, what's your nationality? That means you have a nation that you come from. If I say, what's your nation? That means you have a nationality associated with the nation you come from. So if I ask you, what's the nation that you come from or your nationality, what would you tell me according to the Bible? You would probably tell me you don't know. Am I correct? Maybe, but maybe Okay. Not. And maybe. My sister, what's your nationality according to the Bible? What nation do you come from according to the Bible? The Israelites. You come from the Israelites. That is correct. But I'm going to show you that most of our people don't know that. Give me Isaiah chapter 1. But well, prior uh, to you knowing that you came from the Israelites, because when we were born into this world, we, we, we weren't born into that knowledge. We were born into, we put African American on our birth certificate. Well, sometimes we, we, we be so, so ashamed, we don't even put other or something. Just because we just don't even want to, because we know that's not our nationality. We know that African American is not our nationality. African American is two, the name of African American comes from two white men. Leo Scipio Africanus and American Massachusetts. Two white men, but we call ourselves African American. But the Bible prophesies, yes my, yes my sister, but the Bible prophesies that our people in the last days will not know who they are. Most of them, and what's required of them. Some may know, but then some may not. The ones that know, they may not know what's required of them. And the ones that know, most of them not doing what's required of them. So I'm gonna get you this, read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth its owner. So the Bible says the ox knoweth its owner, right? A dumb animal, considered to be a dumb animal or a stubborn animal, read. And the ass its master's crib. A dumb animal, right? That's why they call him the jackass, read. But Israel, mm -hmm. but Israel. So the Bible says these two stubborn and dumb animals, they know where they come from. But it says, but Israel, the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, right, in poverty, we do it not know. They do not what? They do not know. They do not know. They do not know. But you, my sister, you know. You know that you are an Israelite, that you are a princess, right? So now you knowing, can you do what I mean, I think 10 or 11, I need to show you what's required of you. Because you knowing is half the battle. You ever heard that? You knowing who you are is half the battle. The book of Job chapter eight, verse eight says, I inquire, pray thee for the search of thy fathers. And it seems that you have already done that. You know your forefathers that you are a chosen vessel, not just African American. But now you gotta get what's required of you. Now you gotta get what's required of you. Now the hard part of knowing comes application. Change gotta come now. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Huh. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? So the Bible says, knowing that we are Israelites, now that we know as black women, as black men out here, we must be required of something. We, 
but to fear the Lord, thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways. So we got to walk in all his ways, my young brother. We and to love him uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and uh -huh. with all thy soul. Come on. To keep the commandments of the Lord. So the Bible says we must keep the commandments of God. So now we're going to get, now we're going to get the part that takes us, it takes us a little step backwards sometimes. It takes us a little time to, you know what? That's why right, I got to change this. Give me our Timothy. All right, so now we knowing that we Israel, we have to change. We got to change how we look. We got to change how we act. This is the point that our people don't like. Whoa, I'm an Israelite. Brother, why are you still smoking? Brother, why are you still selling drugs to your people? No, 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 I just, I just know that I'm an Israelite. I just know that I'm God's chosen people. But there's no change after that. We need change in our community. Right. What's wrong with you knowing? So I all praises to the Father that you know you Israel. This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. In like manner also, uh -huh. that woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. So my sister, you gotta change how you dress. You gotta put on modest apparel, right? So my brothers don't see you as an appetizer, right? So you can be able to have a, a God-fearing man to go along with your son, right? You can have a God-fearing man that knows he's an Israelite, that knows that he must uh, rule and command his household and his woman. And he's gonna tell his woman, my sister, my woman, my baby, my wife, my rib, whatever you want him to call you, whatever y'all call each other, he's gonna say, my, hey, I, He's going to tell you this. We got it again. In like manner also. In like manner also, meaning our foremothers, right? Our foremothers, Judith, Esther, right? All of these righteous women, they dressed in modest apparel. They had pretty long dresses on, right? They covered themselves up, right? They wasn't coming outside looking like an appetizer for men, right? Come on. That women adorn themselves. The word adorn means to beautify. So guess what? You can still beautify yourself in modest apparel. We got beautiful sisters. My brother got a wife, beautiful. My, uh, uh, my brother got a wife, beautiful. And they look beautiful in modest apparel. We. With shame faceness. With shame faceness. Now the Bible also goes into how a woman must carry herself. Shame faceness. Most of our women, I'm not saying it's you, but most of our women got, don't have shame face. They loud and they bold. Give me Proverbs 7, hold that. I'm gonna show you the characteristics. When, when a woman is loud, and, 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 and bold in our appearance. They quick to get up in a man's face. They don't care about nothing. I'm gonna show you the Bible says that that is a whorish spirit. And I wanna change the minds of our women because we as young men and older men, we need righteous sisters in our community. Right. We dead. This Proverbs is the book of Proverbs, right. chapter seven, verse 10. Come and behold, there met him a woman. So the Bible says, behold, there met him a woman. There met him a woman, right, read. With the attire of an harlot. So my sister, it says the attire of an harlot. Right? Read. And subtle of heart. Meaning subtle, meaning sneaky, cunning. They trying to play game. They trying to play you. They trying to run up on you. They really don't want nothing. They just want the money. That's, that's, that's the most modern woman today. Right. They don't have substance. They're not looking for a righteous man. They're not looking for marriage. Right. They'll come. Maybe some of them just did that straight up tell you. I don't want nothing. I ain't about you. I ain't doing shit. I just want to have sex. That's the minds of our people. Why? Because they trust in oppression. That's the agenda that America pushes for our women. To be over the black man. And to rule the household. To keep the black man out the household. And I'll give you your section name. I'll give you your money. Just keep that man out of here. And I'm going to feed you. I'm going to indoctrinate you with my social media. And your child. I'm going to raise your child for you. Here, give him this iPad. And they watch all types of filth. We. She is loud she is and what? stubborn. Uh -huh. Her feet abide not in her house. So the Bible says, uh, the woman that, I'll read it from the top again, Holy woman, verse 10. Verse 10. And behold, uh -huh. there made him a woman uh -huh. with the attire of an harlot. So the Bible is giving you characteristics of a woman, right, and their attire. You know a police officer by his attire. You know a fireman by his attire, right? You generally know a dope boy by his attire, where he's at. He's on the corner, he's sagging his pants, he probably got a bunch of tattoos. Yes, the Bible associates you judging a book for, for the most part by its cover. Right. Yes, yes, that's a part of judgment. Well, if you're overweight, I can obviously see that you're obese and you probably don't go to the gym. So yes, I can judge you based on your appearance and how you speak and how you conduct yourself and what you wear and what you're willing to show the world.
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!